Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Ayan Oshkosh. I'm your host, Cheryl Hentz, and very pleased to welcome back to the show um, someone who's been here many times over the last number of years since he's been in our school district, and a couple of women who have never been here before, but we hope that this will not be their last time. Uh, to my right, we have uh, Oshkosh Area School District Superintendent Stan Mack II. To my immediate left, we have Katie Neiman, the Communication Director for yes. OASD. And to her left is Julie Conrad, Director of Curriculum and Assessment. Mm -hmm. So welcome. Although oh, I think thanks. maybe once upon a time you were here before. I think I was here. It's been several years, though. It's been a long time. Yes. And I don't actually remember what we were talking about. I think it might have been something going on with it, the school district in Fox Valley Tech or something like yep, that. Yeah, it was talking about dual credit options and career pathways. See, so, I have a good memory. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome back and thanks. welcome to all of you Thank for being you. here. We appreciate it so much. We're going to talk about a number of things tonight, um, mostly the school district, how well it's doing. Uh, in comparison with other districts around the state, maybe even around the country, we'll see um, what little surprises they have in store for us. But one of the first things we want to talk about is, um, I think, something of very serious nature. Um, everybody's talking about it. We've had a lot of school shootings in this country in the last couple of years. The most recent one, as we're taping this tonight, it was about a week and a half ago. Um, and so we, we want to address this because there are things coming at us from a number of, of directions. Number one, how do you keep the kids safe in school? And number two, as part of that, are you arming teachers with handguns and training special teachers to have handguns? So let's i don't know who wants to address this uh, <laughs> um, i'll begin with that one. right <laughs> so so let's talk about the school safety in general certainly from the time i went to school in mm -hmm. the oshkosh school district um, things have changed and so talk about how we are keeping our kids safe sure. today mm -hmm. well one of the things that um, we have done and um, we really began a very strong um, process of um, securing our schools uh, was following um, uh, uh, about uh, five years ago, it was uh, now five years ago in December, uh, Connecticut um, experience with the small children in elementary school and we uh, immediately began a process um, of switching from uh, kind of more open doors to locked door security so that all of our schools were equipped with um, uh, uh, locked doors and as soon as students arrived in the morning, um, one of the custodians' responsibilities was to circulate around and make sure that all the school's uh, doors were locked and they remained so throughout the day with installing um, buzzers and uh, cameras at doors so that those who needed to come in would have to identify themselves and come into the school. That's a that's really a pretty basic uh, rudimentary process. Since then, uh, uh, two years ago in the uh, 2016 uh, 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 referendum, uh, we uh, added um, uh, uh, literally um, hundreds of cameras into uh, locations all across the uh, district and uh, uh, we uh, uh, secure both from the outside and inside and we're able to track um, uh, the comings and goings of uh, individual parking lot and we have individuals monitoring and recording what's happening on a constant basis. The other is that um, we have comprehensively trained uh, the uh, school district uh, uh, staff, uh, parents, students um, about uh, with the Alice program which is a, a program that um, had developed after Columbine where there was uh, a lot of discussion about how um, the original major Colorado uh, shooting was um, uh, that uh, effectively students and staff were effectively like um, uh, like uh, sheep to the slaughter. It was um, um, there was no reaction. People just sat in place when you had the intruders and responded to them and what we now teach is uh, uh, to all staff students is to exercise their best judgment and to take action to secure uh, classrooms, um, pushing uh, devices in front of the doors, uh, taking fire extinguishers and um, and uh, shooting them at uh, at uh, the intruders. All those kind of things um, are all, and we have trained all across the district, everyone with the 
appropriate actions to take and to um, uh, move and leave. And very much um, I could tell that with the Florida experience that they also had been trained in Alice and were uh, using many of those same uh, training. And there's been some criticism uh, even at the presidential level that uh, to train people that we should not do that. Well, that's uh, absolutely on national safety. People indicate that that's the best um, response. But the first issue is prevention. And one of the things that uh, we monitor, and, and in this case, um, we had, uh, there was a student who, who had been expelled from school, and um, uh, having the individuals respond uh, to his behavior, he knew he was there, and all the wrong things happened there were uh, the concerns about um, his uh, social media um, uh, pictures of having firearms and other calls to his home um, somehow didn't add up um, to having him on top of their list. Uh, one of the things that um, we're really blessed with, and in fact, an uh, incident happened this week where an individual um, had placed um, photographs of himself on Facebook and had um, been identified uh, identif with firearms and um, um, we had students do all the right things. They um, reported uh, to um, their principal, reported to um, uh, the police liaison officers in both of our high schools, although the individual was just from one high school, but the student was known. Uh, the, um, that information got to our uh, great police department, who in turn investigated and arrested the individual. And all the things that went wrong in Florida went right just this week in the Oshkosh Area School District. In, um, uh, uh, taking hold of this individual who um, uh, may or may not have been threatening because his, his Facebook didn't directly threaten the school, but uh, it was not uh, the appropriate uh, response. And um, over the last um, five years, six years, we've had a number of occasions where we've had individuals who have used Facebook or one of the other social media uh, uh, devices uh, to promote, um, uh, for whatever reason, um, you know, when you when you have a terrible secret, it's uh, for at least adolescent boys, it's hard to keep that secret. You've got to tell people about it, mm -hmm. which is a wonderful thing that they do, very stupid on their part, but it's a good thing. And um, uh, we have um, responded very carefully. We meet monthly with our, uh, the school district officials, have a team of our principals and others um, who meet, uh, and I'm a part of that team where we meet monthly with our police and fire and county sheriff's department because two of our schools are in the county. And um, we um, uh, regularly communicate on everything that we need to know, and we participate with, uh, with uh, those officers with mock drills, with um, every kind of action. And the best part of all of this is that the leaders of the police department know all the leaders in the school district, and they partner together in knowing each other. Then in a crisis, uh, we work as one team, and you can be assured that uh, uh, our operations together with the police and sheriff's department and also fire department is very strong. And there's no guarantee that we can always prevent anything from happening, but I think we are on top of the, top of the list on being able to respond. Uh, just this week, um, we had uh, a number of our leaders uh, in training at uh, Wisconsin Dells, again with the uh, Wisconsin uh, uh, School Security uh, mm -hmm. Group. And we participate in all of those things, and the leaders uh, of that team do a great job. The last piece that I, I always need to say is that um, I've been at the superintendency long before um, uh, Columbine, but in since Columbine and those incidents and uh, even some of the more um, less drastic incidents that occurred, in the last 30 years uh, in the superintendent, there isn't a single day that I get up in the morning and I don't think about the issue of let's hope and pray we have a safe day. Mm -hmm. The reality is that that is the focus. The superintendent in uh, the school district in Florida said the very same thing as, uh, as he was reflecting on what occurred, that I don't think there is a superintendent that um, uh, doesn't reflect on the issue that uh, let's have a successful safe day of learning and uh, not have anything happen to a single one of our, our, our children. And, uh, but it takes takes the village, and uh, that's where where um, uh, students participating in the uh, process of reporting things that they hear, mm -hmm. um, poli uh, the police officers working with us, and our administrators being attentive to all the rumors and all the 
um, potentials mm -hmm. uh, working together. And because of that trust relationship, our communication is great. And when, when I hear from the chief of police, uh, this is what we've done, we've, we have uh, picked up this individual, this is what happened and how we've handled it. We're, we're in a marvelous community of working together to do the very best to avoid these situations. Sure. Well, I, I'm glad that you guys are on top of all this. I mean, it's, it's heart-wrenching to see this footage on TV of kids mm -hmm. coming, running out of schools with their hands on their heads or hands up in the air. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is just a, a totally different time than mm -hmm. when any of us went to school. Right. Um, and, you know, we have to keep evolving mm -hmm. as bad elements in our society evolve. Right. Um, and I, I know that there was a situation this school year um, at West where there was a bomb threat. Thankfully, that mm -hmm. didn't turn out to be anything but mm -hmm. a threat. But you guys took the necessary steps to make those kids safe sure. and to get them out of harm's way. And, yeah. and so mm -hmm. I commend you for that. One last thing, you asked sure. me the question about arming teachers. Um, yes. uh, no, we have no armed teachers. We don't intend to. We have um, uh, licensed police officers who are a party uh, to that. And um, uh, I've, uh, I'm certain that um, uh, the vast majority of our teachers uh, would have no desire. They have plenty to do to deliver good instruction than to be uh, carrying a, um, a weapon at their waist or in their um, as I, I had seen one of the programs with a Colorado teacher who uh, took to wearing um, uh, cowboy boots and has a uh, holster in his in his cowboy boot. Um, uh, I think, um, and just remember the fact that anything that teachers would safely carry along with um, that's uh, not a, a, of course they wouldn't be carrying long guns, is no fight with individuals who have been uh, harming schools. They're all coming with long guns and our police officers, our police departments say that's no contest. Um, a handgun uh, um, with somebody with a long gun, uh, there is no um, uh, no level of um, comparison there uh, for the safety of uh, the person with the handgun. And lastly, uh, we would uh, our police officers uh, train on a monthly basis in keeping their accuracy up, and to expect that we would uh, ever ask teachers to take that on, I think, is uh, so totally ludicrous, and they would always lose. And think about the potential of um, of such a, a handgun falling in the hands of a student, mm -hmm. even accidentally being injured. So that's not on our track. I don't uh, see that as a coming future, but I think um, prevention and having, um, uh, uh, if there's a resource that the state chooses or federally, they add resources of, for um, giving us uh, more um, uh, security guards um, paid for um, uh, to, um, to guard our schools. Far better having professionals do that than ever putting that in the hands of our teachers. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. Um, so let's talk about some happier things. <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. um, there were two things that we're going to talk about tonight, and I think mm -hmm. they sort of dovetail with each other. Mm -hmm. um, one is the Oshkosh for Education uh, annual report. Mm -hmm. I know that we're not getting a close-up of this, but we've got some slides that we're going to be showing as we talk about this. Um, the other part of this is a uh, school report card for the 2016-2017 school year. Mm -hmm. um, and we have some slides, as I said, that talk about, they sort of dovetail with both mm -hmm. these things. Um, so the, correct me if I'm wrong, the report card is part of the annual report, is that correct? Correct. Okay. So if you look at the strategic plan for the Oshkosh Area School District, um, and I believe one of the slides is going to come up here that talks about the different priority areas, the school report card informs and tells us how we're doing on two of the priority areas. Priority area one, where we're improving student learning for all, mm -hmm. and priority area five that goes with um, strengthening partnerships and community engagement so all students are college, career, and community ready. And so the O for E annual report is really talking about how are we doing on that strategic plan and then the school report card informs us on those particular priority areas. So when you open up the strategic plan, and we actually did this in January, we presented to the community, um, the strategic plan um, report for O for E, we had um, demographics and other interesting facts at the top 
in the middle of this we had the measures of our success, but coming down at the bottom was talking about what are the academic successes of our student. Is that what we're looking at here? That's right. And okay. so the school report card, um, I'm happy to announce that the Oshkosh Area School District meets expectations. We were this close mm -hmm. to exceeding expectations. And so in the last three years of school report cards that have been given out, we have increased our scores as a district each time. And one thing that we've really been working on is closing gaps and increasing academic achievement and we're doing that by making sure that students are growing. So there are different areas on the school report card. You can see in the upper right hand corner there we do the talks about student achievement, district growth, closing gaps, and on track to being post-secondary readiness, our students college, career, and community ready. And in the growth area, um, this is the first time that the Oshkosh Area School District has been above the state average when it comes to that number and growth. And we've been working really hard putting new curriculum resources in place, really improving the instruction of, of teachers so that students grow. And we want to make sure that every student grows at least one year and is constantly improving. Whether a student is struggling or whether they are high ability academics, we want to make mm -hmm. sure that we're stretching all students. So that growth right there is what has increased the scores um, of all of our schools across that. And actually let's look at the next slide where we're looking at our comparables. Um, if we, we have up there on the screen our school districts that are similar in size to Oshkosh mm -hmm. because when you start to look at comparables we're, we're 10,000 students and so comparing us to a school district of a, a thousand or two thousand students or someplace metropolitan like Green Bay or Milwaukee it doesn't make sense so how do we how do we look compared to others mm -hmm. and right now we're in the middle of the we're in the middle of the pack mm -hmm. but what we really want to do is we want to be moving and increasing those scores um, for our students. But boy, there's not a whole, as I look at those bars there, mm -hmm. um, yes, it's very slightly going up, mm -hmm. but boy, it, there's not a whole lot of difference, yeah. you know, um, between actually, any of the districts, really. Right. Actually, if you go to the next slide, if we go to the next slide, um, what we have up there is a graph of the 33 largest districts, and the, and the red arrow is where um, the Oshkosh Area School District is compared to those other 33 districts and comparing the poverty rate. Because one thing we know about standardized tests and school report cards for districts and individual schools are all based on the standardized tests that students take in the spring. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if you have a student in the Oshkosh Area School District um, and they were a junior, they just took the ACT this past week. And coming up in um, March and into April, all of our students in grades three through 10 are gonna be taking their state assessments. Okay. So the school report cards are based on standardized assessments. And what research tells us is that one of the best predictors for how students are going to do on a standardized test is the their socioeconomic status or, or are they in poverty. Mm -hmm. And so we've been doing a little bit of research and you can see up there that the accountability score and the percent of students that are economically disadvantaged, there's a direct relationship between those two scores. Mm -hmm. And so Oshkosh is a school district where right around 40% of our students are low socioeconomic or, or at the poverty level. 40%. 40 percent. Wow. But if you look at some of our schools, we're as high as 70 percent mm -hmm. of a school where students qualify for free and reduced lunch. That's usually what's used wow. to indicate the poverty level. Sure. So when we're looking at that, what we really want to do is we want to beat the odds. You know, education is the best way to increase your odds, meet your hopes and dreams, mm -hmm. and that's what we really want to be doing with um, students. So we're okay. right there in the middle of the pack. Okay. And there's a widespread on that poverty range, uh, mm -hmm. Julie indicated, you know, some 70 plus, but we have some schools uh, social economically that they may be 10, 12 percent um, free and reduced. So the, the range is great, but that 40 percent is not out of line compared to what it's pretty close to the average in the state in of Wisconsin. State of Wisconsin uh, right. right. Mm -hmm. And so if we're using that as a predictor, um, we're that's the average of the state of Wisconsin and academically achieving we're right about the average of the state of Wisconsin a little bit above I would like us to be above that sure, sure. so that's what we're striving for every that's what okay. we're striving for every single day okay if we go to the next slide real okay. quick there it is there it is um, this shows our overall improvement um, we only had one school that went um, down a category um, and we had over I want to say there's quite a few schools um, seven schools that actually went up a category. We had a, quite a bit of improvement because once again we've been really working hard on closing gaps and making sure that all students are all students are growing. Sure, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. um, 
Do we have another slide or no? Yep. We had one more slide, and as we were talking about test scores and we were talking about all these different indicators, I always caution people to when they start looking just at test scores and, and making judgments because it's Austin said to me, you know, Julie, when we start, when we're looking for purchasing a home or, come, you know, coming to move into the community, we look at test scores and how are your schools in our community and our, we have great schools in our community and schools and children are more than just numbers and there's mm -hmm. great things happening in the Oshkosh area school district but you have to remember that those you know when you take a test and every and those numbers are based on just a test it's not reflecting all the things that are that are that are going on sure. within that within our community or within the schools sure mm -hmm. and so that is sort of what your your cautionary tale is there yes mm -hmm. okay. that when you're looking at numbers it's really a starting point to learn to learn more so okay. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things that I always advise is the fact that when people are, um, you know, in, you know, as spring comes on, all the baseball fields that open up and all the parents uh, and throughout the fall outside, there are a lot of activities that go on and parents talk to each other. Mm -hmm. And um, I always ask the question, how are your children doing? Because um, mm -hmm. uh, the averages um, uh, don't tell the picture, but um, uh, when we, we see the outcomes and the progress that uh, we have uh, children all the way through as um, in the, in the um, uh, merit scholarship finalists all the way through to mm -hmm. um, successful admissions into uh, advanced uh, uh, high level um, colleges and universities, uh, we have lots of students doing extremely well mm -hmm. and uh, the majority of our students um, move on um, to uh, meet that uh, uh, expectation when they walk across that stage in uh, June of each year. Sure. Mm -hmm. And we'll just say that in June of this year, uh, the high school graduation for both West and North is going to be at the Menominee Nation Arena. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, has, have you guys been there yet? Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 We, um, we checked it out to make sure it was going to be the right place. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we're really excited about that because um, uh, we are then able to uh, make sure that uh, adequate, uh, adequate seating. Um, and um, uh, six years ago, um, I was told by the board in the spring of 2012 that, um, you know, one of the things that would be really good is could you get a place for graduation that's air conditioned? Well, the field house at North has been air conditioned, but um, uh, West had in the previous years gone through tremendous heavy humidity and heat and uh, they experience graduation as being miserable for the public <laughs> as well as the students and uh, now we have air conditioning and we have adequate seating and the other piece that I'm so pleased about by our moving our graduation from uh, Wednesday or Thursday night to uh, uh, to a Sunday afternoon um, provides the opportunity for um, uh, many family members to attend and that we don't have to get into issuing tickets um, we um, we don't mm -hmm. control the ad admission and uh, you know it's free to attend and families can celebrate together on a weekend that uh, during a work day weeknight um, it's very difficult and yes we kept attendance down in those previous locations but lots of people couldn't get there because yeah. of the time yeah. of day and the day of the week well, so, so this is great it's, mm -hmm. it's great and it is a wonderful facility too mm -hmm. yes. and um, I think there's a lot of parking so uh, and certainly a lot of seats so Definitely. yeah yeah. Good. yeah it's going to be an exciting uh, venture and um, we also checked out very carefully great sound um, mm -hmm. it, no one should go without and with the um, uh, uh, video uh, every every parent should be able to see their um, their child as uh, they're handed the diploma with uh, 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 a great, um, great view throughout the area. Okay, mm -hmm. excellent. Want to talk about um, communication a little bit, and that's where you come in. Absolutely. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, one of the priorities here, it's priority number two, is to improve district communications. And um, uh, you know, there's a hundred percent of two goals: allocate mm -hmm. dedicated resources for district communications and marketing, and um, goal B is understand needs, preferences, and perceptions of key stakeholders. Um, where it's lacking a little bit, where the district is is not doing so great, is uh, developing brand communication and marketing plan, and then uh, it gets a little bit better with goal D, which is improve district communication delivery channels. So. Um, you are relatively new to the job, Katie, yes. um, mm -hmm. and you know we were talking before we started to tape that uh, this district used to have a communications sure. person, um, and then 
I'm not sure, did away with it, I think probably I think, to save funds. Yep, I was um, going to say budget cuts. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that and, was over 20 years ago, as yeah. I recall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a while. It's been yeah. a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so now we have a new communication person. Mm -hmm. And so how are you working to, I mean, these are some pretty lofty goals. So they what are. are you yes. doing to help the district develop a brand and use all the channels available to market it? Sure. Um, well, first off, we're definitely in a, a great position, having done all of the work that came in advance of bringing this position on. Um, uh, in 2016, the district was able to conduct an extensive communication audit, um, which I have then been able to use as the basis for guiding my work so far. Um, so within that audit, it kind of prioritized what are what can we focus on or should we be focusing on immediately to help really foster that level of communication throughout all of our schools as well as the district. Um, so that's really what I've been guiding my decisions and my, my work off of. Um, it's so great that we have uh, terrific school leaders that are already doing a lot of wonderful things in their schools. Um, and with me being able to be a resource for them, um, I'm really just learning how I can assist them and then also how I can uh, bring a consistent voice to a lot of the communications that are um, either already in existence or need to be. So uh, developing uh, those different resources uh, in partnership with a lot of the schools and the activities they're doing. Okay. And um, I'm sure that, I mean, you're a younger person. Um, I'm sure that you're using a lot of the social media avenues and outlets that are available these days. Yes. Um, someone told me a few weeks ago that Facebook is an old person's social media um, go-to thing, and I don't know that that's really true. Yeah, I was going to um, say, I don't think I'm that old. Yeah, I, I, you know, I don't think I'm that old either. I mean, there's each one, I think, serves a very different audience, yep. and I think it serves a different benefit. I mean, on Facebook, mm -hmm. for example, you can say as much as you want, mm -hmm. you know, and you can put photos and things like that. Instagram, you can just kind of do photos and a couple little lines, and Twitter now, well, we know what our president's mm -hmm. using with Twitter <laughs> and what he's doing with it, but you can say more on Twitter. But what are you finding the social media avenue that you enjoy best well, that I, is most effective sure. for Sure. I think um, as a district, we'll definitely be looking to go into all of those facets because our goal is really reaching the entire community, and that ranges all age uh, you know, spectrums. Um, I would say right now we're able to uh, put a lot of our attention into Facebook and Twitter because that's where we have a present current mm -hmm. uh, presence currently. Um, and for those of you, if you don't follow our Facebook and our Twitter accounts, I encourage you to do so. Uh, you'll start to see more and more content that we're pushing out, mm -hmm. and we're really using uh, Facebook especially as a, as a venue to uh, spotlight our student success, our uh, school success, our educator success, and really just open up that dialogue with the Oshkosh community. Mm -hmm. um, at Twitter the same. Obviously those are, as you mentioned, shorter conversations but still we, we want to be there um, so that those that maybe don't have a child in the district or aren't aware of what's going on have that tie-in um, so just to have a better understanding of everything that's going on. Sure, sure. In addition to that, you know, we do have a lot of our schools that are very active on their social sites which is fantastic. Uh, part of with this role coming in is now um, developing a process that we can bring those sort of in-house and create a mm -hmm. district structure so that when our schools are, community, are communicating, it's a consistent message and they, they know that it's the um, district behind um, a lot of the, the things that are going on as well. Sure. One of the things, when, when we talk about consistency, I, I was a little bit thrown by, not terribly thrown by because not much really throws me, but uh, when I think about the mission of the school district, I see one mission right here very prominently displayed. Well, this is Oshkosh for Education. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but mm -hmm. this is a mission. Yep. Um, and then the district has another yep. mission. Yeah. And then each school has mm -hmm. its own mission. Yeah. And it's really confusing, mm -hmm. to me anyway, as I'm kind of looking at things. Mm -hmm. is, is there one underlying thing or maybe a couple underlying things that would be the same from place to place as far as a mission goes? 
-hmm. Julie has that exact line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we want to we want to make sure that all students are college career and community ready while building community through education. And so mm -hmm. that that permeates through all of our schools and all of our messaging is that we want students ready and we want to, and we want to do it through the community. Um, it it's interesting because we can have goals. Um, we can have goals at each school, we can have goals for teachers, we can have goals for students. But when you have a mission, the reason that we want to have a mission with a school we want to have a mission with an organization is that no matter what we may not always we may shoot for the goals we may not always reach them but we always can stay true to our mission mm -hmm. and so when you have that and you have that focus as a school each school has its own identity each school has its mm -hmm. own culture and climate so the mission sure. is going to be slightly different sure. but underpinning all of them is that we want students college career and community ready okay and did you want to say something? No, I, I think mm -hmm. um, that is so um, uh, carefully crafted to remind what, what are the outcomes because we are mm -hmm. preparatory to um, all other post high school um, that mm -hmm. uh, we, we do not create um, uh, individuals that are um, totally ready for um, uh, for their um, their work in life because every virtually every job needs additional uh, additional mm -hmm. training and we are the foundation and uh, and so that. Uh, um, the word ready in that statement is very um, important because that um, uh, tells me that's a launching pad, you know, that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the old uh, graduation one, um, that um, uh, commencement, people always think at graduation as a commencement, well, this is an end. No, a commencement means to begin. Mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. um, and, and the commencing on, on life's journey is, is important, and that's where uh, our theme of um, uh, ready is is mm -hmm. uh, is clearly and that's our responsibility to get every child ready um, mm -hmm. for the next steps along the way right and every step is not for every student is not necessarily college mm -hmm. you yeah, know you've correct. got some students who mm -hmm. maybe they don't want to go to school at all mm -hmm. um, I don't know that that would be the greatest thing in the world, but you know mm -hmm. maybe they're going to take over a family business or whatever, mm -hmm. and right. they don't mm -hmm. feel the need to go on to school. Others may want to go into um, you know more of the labor end of things, where mm -hmm. they're being general contractors, or they want to work construction but not necessarily be a boss. Um, they want to use their hands to build mm -hmm. and create yeah, things. Nice. And I, I, I think for so long, society kind of said, you know, got to push these kids to college, got to push them to mm -hmm. college. But the technical colleges, the vocational mm -hmm. schools are very important. And in exploring, and, and Julie works with our folks on, on uh, the issue of in technical education and, and also dealing with apprenticeships, because uh, some of it may begin in preparing for those careers um, uh, with uh, quite a number of students uh, in partnership with our business community uh, having apprenticeship experiences to explore um, and begin uh, the necessary training for those trades and then um, and in most cases uh, they discover they like um, the initial experience and then we celebrate the fact that uh, most of them uh, go on either through technical college or through uh, uh, union trades um, uh, experiences to really prepare themselves to be proficient and in some cases licensed in the specialty fields mm -hmm. uh, to do so and uh, and but more and more that great partnership we have with the community of taking on uh, and sharing with us uh, that responsibility uh, this coming year um, uh, and, and we have beginning this year on a wonderful partnership that uh, Julie and our folks with uh, the chamber have worked with uh, the Oshkosh Corporation and mm -hmm. in a partnership in educating children during their both juniors and senior years. Yep, yep. And so currently right now we have four students that are working in engineering apprenticeships um, oh, at neat. Oshkosh Corp and mm -hmm. we have six students, um, actually five from the Oshkosh Area School District and one from Winnicani that is that are currently working um, in the assembler and um, the manufacturing end of Oshkosh Corp and they started just at the end of January right. in apprenticeship things. Mm -hmm. So really looking for, when we talk about ready, it's, you know, our kids Kids having the opportunity to explore, to look at things. How often have we heard um, sitting around the dinner table or when people are talking, they're like, oh my gosh, my teen has no idea what they want to do or mm -hmm. where they want to go when they grow up. And we want to make sure that to be ready also means that you've, you've had career exploration and you've had opportunities to look at different things, not limiting what you're doing, mm -hmm. but having parallel passing 
I've looked at all these things and if I want to be you know a professional athlete well do I also have another plan to be you know a, a business person or going on to be something in the healthcare field you know what's going to what's going to interest you what are you going to be passionate about and can we help you plan to get there sure. and there's many routes to do that and in remembering mm -hmm. that all along on career building and preparing um, uh, children adolescents for the future there are many different stop there isn't one, just one stop mm -hmm. Place. Mm -hmm. There are many places to step off and explore and uh, work through that experience. And um, uh, if we standardize everything to um, uh, this is uh, where everyone's going, and you know whether it's um, college or um, the whole variety of offerings that we have in partnership with uh, Fox Valley Technical College as well as um, uh, University of Wisconsin Oshkosh, uh, what an array of opportunities in a community yeah. such as this with um, uh, uh, two fine institutions of higher education that um, we also partner with mm -hmm. at the uh, at the uh, high school level where uh, students are able to get credit for those um, uh, uh, beginning learning activities um, that are dual credit uh, mm -hmm. so that they're both earning uh, uh, college credit and earning high school uh, credit so wow. being able to graduate yep. and we have lots of students who really get an advanced run at higher education mm -hmm. because of that partnership with our two local higher education institutions. Yeah. Sure, and that's one of the things that's in our actual annual report here is that we have 42 plus courses at the high school level that they that students can get dual credit for hmm. with Fox Valley Technical mm -hmm. College or UW Oshkosh. Well, that's great because you know when I was in school, and I'm probably dating myself a lot here, but uh, when I was in school, girls took home ec, boys took industrial <laughs> arts. Okay. And that was it. There was no crossing over. Well, now it's um, technology and engineering and family and consumer science. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah. so there and, you go. And but girls can the, go into yeah, and, and each one, of those, and the boys can go right. into the other if they want. And, and yeah. each of those offerings, um, uh, as in our partnerships, they um, in family and consumer science, uh, uh, we have uh, students uh, taking dual credit options with um, our uh, combination with Fox Valley Technical College, as well as uh, quite a number of um, offerings with. Um, uh, with students in, in what used to be, quote, industrial arts or sh really in the old days, shop. Shop, yeah. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and those opportunities are, are so different today because uh, the typical um, build a birdhouse shop doesn't exist any longer. Right, exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so many times I think, oh, gosh, if I could just be a kid and go back. I mean, <laughs> I <know. laughs> because mm -hmm. the times, yeah, you'd have to go through all that other stuff that mm -hmm. you don't want to go back and, mm -hmm. and rehash, but... The times are so different now. There's mm -hmm. so many exciting opportunities mm -hmm. for kids out there, mm -hmm. yeah. and they just have to avail themselves of it. When I look through our collection for both high schools, of course, offerings, and looking at the amazing combination and um, and tracks that we have available for students to make choices, mm -hmm. and uh, that um, uh, there be uh, the most difficult thing is making some choices, but mm -hmm. uh, but also not necessarily at that age locking in that because you've sampled in this area and you can make other changes to along the way because uh, uh, you, when you're a freshman in uh, eighth grader planning your high school career mm -hmm. uh, you're not locked into uh, but um, it's important to explore and look at um, what are the options what is a good fit and then um, then you'll still change seven more times so sure. yeah good. and mm -hmm. and it's okay and to change okay. your mind mm -hmm. it's fine sure. mm -hmm. um, so let's let's kind of rehash here what are the priorities for the district as things stand today. And those may change too, mm -hmm. just like we're talking about change well, here. We're continuing our efforts on, on dealing with our second um, uh, a strategic plan that um, have a number of pieces and parts that uh, we're, we're working through right now. But uh, uh, certainly the focus, the number one focus will always be and continue to be uh, to um, uh, make these scores look better in our rel mm -hmm. relative relationship to uh, other uh, school districts, but also to um, within that, uh, by making those scores better, we're of course also raising and closing the uh, raise, raising the, uh, the scores for um, uh, children who come from homes of poverty and racial minorities, and making sure that those changes occur and. 
if there's any any focus that is the greatest need because everything else will fall into place if we succeed in closing the gap and raising these mm -hmm. scores that's really yeah. really the issue at hand and uh, uh, and uh, Julie Conrad and uh, uh, Kim Brown uh, uh, their their full world is is paying attention mm -hmm. constantly to um, uh, changing and improving and providing and on um, uh, Julie's side is the measuring of progress in addition to curricular content, but uh, uh, part of Kim's responsibility in addition at, uh, with elementary curriculum is really the issue of training and finding the means to train our staff to become the best they can be and the most efficient they can be. And we've been blessed in the last uh, couple of years where we've kind of slowed the uh, turnover of staff, of teaching staff, and uh, the longer we hang on to our teaching staff and uh, they participate in so much training that we were making investment in them, the better they become at making changes for us into the future. Mm -hmm. And the other thing with that, Stan, is that the longer a child is with us in the Oshkosh Area School District, mm -hmm. the better they do. Because we, we do have students that are that are transient or that are that are moving for, for a lot of different reasons. Mm -hmm. And so when a student moves into the district, the longer they stay with us, and if they've been with us from the beginning, they perform better. Okay. And so... Yeah. If we look at our um, our 12, 13 year, 13 and now really um, mm -hmm. 13 and a half year with 4K program, if we look at children who have come to us and stayed with us mm -hmm. and uh, been uh, consistently with us, their likelihood of being in that upper um, one third of uh, our students coming through schools is far greater mm -hmm. because we're um, they have continuity, have consistency, and um, mm -hmm. um, our, our our schools uh, are a, a set of schools that. Um, offer um, uh, a, uh, a common curriculum so a student if they move within the district they don't have mm -hmm. to start over with figuring out Correct. what do mm -hmm. those what do those words mean that uh, my teacher is talking about mm -hmm. sure um, just one little programming note here uh, for those of you who are um, watching us on television whether it be mm -hmm. local cable access or on uh, YouTube um, our the website address has probably been put up uh, throughout the show but for those of you uh, listening to us on the radio um, I, I know that you kind of got uh, gypped out of seeing the the slides that we mm -hmm. showed earlier and so if you go to Oshkosh k12 dot wi dot us you can see the full report there and not just a few slides um, you can see everything uh, again that's oshkosh dot k12 dot wi dot us and um, I'll try and remember to repeat that a couple more times before our time's up um, you talked about teachers and um, you know when Act 10 was first passed a number of years ago um, you know teachers really kind of got the shaft, I think. And along with a lot of other public um, service workers, public uh, sector workers. So uh, teachers were wanting to leave the profession. Uh, mm -hmm. They didn't feel that they were being appreciated. They were underpaid, um, so on and so forth. And a lot of teachers, not just you know in this district, throughout the state, wanted to leave. Has that sort of evened out a little bit now are we mm -hmm. in a better place we're in a better place part of um part of the issue that i think was a compounding of um, act 10 uh, that um, uh, was not only um, certainly taking economic benefits away from teachers also disarming them from the standpoint of their um their uh, political power to um, deal with uh, decision making and and setting the better economic uh, conditions by uh, terms and conditions of employment or salaries. Uh, but uh, there was a parallel thing that in order to justify that, there was a, uh, I watched it from, uh, I, I saw it when I came to um, Wisconsin, but I watched it from the borders of Minnesota, that the, um, there was, in order to make that happen, there was a very strong effort to demean mm -hmm. the it, teachers. Mm -hmm. And I think, frankly, the demeaning of educators, not just teachers, but all educators, to demean their importance in society and to uh, really attack their integrity, which I think was a far more drastic effect uh, on um, both teachers at the time, but has compounded our issue with a major educator shortage across the state of Wisconsin. Yep. And that whole attitude that we have to demean uh, uh, educators 
in order to justify what we're doing to them economically was, I think, the most vicious, grievous mm -hmm. thing I, I've seen in my 45-year career, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, demean a whole population of hardworking individuals who have invested their own money in becoming uh, educated and licensed and appropriately ready, and who, frankly, are, um, are the most critical uh, variables in supporting the future of, um, of the next generation. Without mm -hmm. teachers, where would we be? Right. Mm -hmm. Because and but I, I think the the worst of Act Ten was that sideline issue of demeaning educators and demeaning them and and that became then slightly the justification from taking away economic well being from them. Mm -hmm. And that that to me is the ultimate uh, betrayal uh, of trust. But I that since that aspect has somewhat settled down, um, other issues um, have um, continued to get better. Okay, good. Well, and, and it really had to be difficult for you, Stan, because you're from Minnesota, mm -hmm. and uh, Wisconsin and Minnesota are compared on so many different mm -hmm. levels, whether it's our teaching uh, mm -hmm. staff mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. education in general, whether it's our prison population, right. whether it's a welfare type thing. It, it doesn't matter. You could take any yeah. type of issue and make the comparisons, right. and Minnesota is doing things so much differently and having such better outcomes mm -hmm. than we are yeah. in Wisconsin. So yeah. it had to be yeah. tough for you to watch that, you know, really backhanding mm -hmm. of educators. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you're right, they didn't deserve that. They didn't need that. And mm -hmm. so talk a little about how you felt yeah. about that. Well, uh, I came to um, Wisconsin at, on the request and invitation of re both the recruiter and the school board um, for the school district um, because my career has always been a fixer. And, um, and uh, let alone um, each school district I've come to and been a superintendent, uh, um, um, in my mission has been to turn around the district and uh, and to deal with it and I've never gone to a place where things were booming and in doing well and uh, to me coming to a district it that to me gives me the ultimate challenge of, of doing so but the education in Wisconsin and uh, because I, I turned down uh, two other opportunities for um, Wisconsin school districts um, before I accepted um, um, the um, Oshkosh position because uh, in one case uh, I um, it, it well in both cases they were um, uh, uh, quite disasters that probably um, uh, were deeper and now they have since um, gotten better but uh, Oshkosh was was a project and to me uh, I like to work when I can make things better and uh, uh, and it it uh, it is it's been truly a joy uh, to do so and when we talk later uh, this spring now about the future I have some additional thoughts I want to uh, share with uh, with you in the greater community about that but I, um, uh, I I saw the exodus of both teachers and administrators and during the first years of Act 10 uh, coming to um, uh, uh, coming to Minnesota to um, obtain licenses and because at that time for about a, uh, two and a half years I was dealing with uh, uh, dealing with licensing people uh, to become Minnesota superintendents principals and uh, and special mm -hmm. ed directors and I saw the massive exodus of um, uh, Wisconsinites especially those who lived in the western half of the state who uh, weren't even going to move but they wanted to commute to Minnesota to go to work yeah. and uh, <laughs> but um, but uh, no that to me has been interesting experiment what I worry most about the future is is the fact that if we don't strengthen and support our schools how will we maintain the economy in the state of Wisconsin because uh, individuals who want to raise their children will look around the country and say uh, there's other places to be to have our children educated because uh, uh, mm -hmm. Wisconsin um, has impaired their education system I think um, in spite of all of it uh, our school district and our sister school districts are doing extremely well in recovery and uh, I, there's nothing to apologize for about quality outcomes but we've got to continue to put more back into it because we if we don't make education more attractive to attract educators to be we've got generations we've got a school um, one of our schools we have eight I believe eight retirees coming out retirees, of one school yep. of one wow. school we have a whole generation of, of we need to replace that many uh, teachers but we have to make education 
uh, uh, more appreciated and uh, ready to um, uh, attract um, greater number of educators. Uh, UWO and all of their sister institutions are sitting there where they're, they're having uh, one third or less of individuals in teacher training. Where will the teachers come from in the future? Mm -hmm. uh, we can't uh, we uh, we can't manufacture um, that kind of quality and uh, and you know in the old days also that frankly and uh, sitting here with uh, uh, two um, women leaders in in our schools, um, I I worry about the future that um, uh, choices we can make because educators and and um, who have historically been dominated by lots of female teachers and educators, um, they have so many other choices. Mm -hmm. You know, um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Julie's trained as a scientist and Julie uh, could be working in, um, in a, uh, a major technology or, mm -hmm. um, or uh, business in, uh, with, uh, with her science background. And we lose lots of individuals mm -hmm. from education and educational leadership because it's not as attractive and without bright men and women, but especially bright women who historically have dominated education, we, we are going to be in a terrible position in the future mm -hmm. uh, because there are plenty of opportunities that um, individuals trained as Julie was uh, could be physicians or could be um, in, pharmacists, uh, in, uh, pharmacists mm -hmm. and doing those things. All those choices now exist that in the old days they didn't exist. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and you know, kudos to you, Julie, for sticking with something that mm -hmm. you are passionate about. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because you could go on to do any of mm -hmm. those other things yeah. and probably make more money mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. have more appreciation, I think, mm -hmm. uh, from the public. Um, but it goes back to mission and what's your what's your life's mission? What's your mm -hmm. goal? What is mm -hmm. you know what are you what do you what do you put here to do? And mm -hmm. and it's really about students. Mm -hmm. It's about kids and it's about our next generation and and educating them. We know that our community is dependent on our children. Our future is dependent mm -hmm. on our children. And so mm -hmm. we want our best and our brightest to be teachers. If anybody ever says well, you, you know, you're too smart to be a teacher. I would argue we need our best and our brightest to be mm -hmm. in front of our children because it's that mm -hmm. teacher that's in front of the child that's the most influential on their learning. And yeah. we need the best and the brightest there. Yeah. Absolutely. And the glass ce is ceiling hasn't been fully broken, but frankly it's been altered enough to create an imbalance of, of mm -hmm. really losing uh, lots of the best and the brightest to other careers. And mm -hmm. we celebrate that for every individual who does that, right. but at the same time we need our fair share of um, bright uh, women and men uh, mm -hmm. to continue to work in education. And when I go around our schools and spend time in our classrooms, I watch with just amazement the, the, um, the quality of what they're delivering on and and frankly um, adding the issue of the amount of patience that they need for that mm -hmm. social interaction with children because it's not just having content knowledge but having the heart mm -hmm. um, the, to me the issue is uh, is really uh, having uh, the heart and not just the mind uh, to deliver and um, we've got amazing folks out there who are doing that each and every day. Sure, bravo. Um, want to talk about a couple things here yet in our in our remaining minutes. Um, the Oshkosh North High School counseling team uh, mm -hmm. recently got some kudos. Yes. They were mm -hmm. named the uh, 2018 school counseling team of the year mm -hmm. by the Wisconsin School Counseling Association. Um, so kudos to them. Do you want to, anyone lots, make, want to yeah. make a comment on yeah. that? Absolutely acclaimed and part of that was uh, um, going beyond the um, uh, the expectation going the extra mm -hmm. mile on, uh, on serving children and uh, students and their interaction with uh, with uh, with parents to make uh, make a difference that it um, you know the, uh, the the narrow focus of counseling uh, as some of us uh, who are a little more elderly might remember uh, counselors with um, kind of a narrow limited role and our counselors today are delivering on uh, uh, on services that go well beyond the means and uh, North High School's team is uh, is exemplary of, of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, look at all. Oh, I, go ahead. Oh, no, go I wanted to say it, it's it just it makes me smile every time that we talk about the North Counseling Team, and and getting that state award. Um, and congratulations to them. But I also want to give a little kudos to Katie, because. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times we've been winning awards, our staff and our educators have mm -hmm. been doing great so. things, but the stories have not been told. Right. And so when that when that story that, that Katie mm -hmm. press released and put out and the way it was crafted, mm -hmm. it got picked up by right. many different things. We never would have gotten that coverage and the recognition mm -hmm. for those educators, for those counselors like we did before. And so 
that's key behind priority area too is we have mm -hmm. to be telling our stories. Mm -hmm. We have to be telling the good news about all the great things our staff and our students are incredible. What are they're out there doing incredible things. Yes, so, absolutely. And, and as, so yeah, as thank part you of your that. your work, I know you do a fair amount of um, mm -hmm. of writing and um, uh, and uh, Katie um, uh, effectively ghost writes um, for um, most of, many of our all of our administrators mm -hmm. um, the messages that are either sent to staff or to parents or to um, uh, in a crisis um, Katie's right there with us um, mm -hmm. uh, communicating and put together putting together the scripts that we then electronically or verbally um, communicate to to parents to keep them appraised uh, along the way and each of those things are are critical to the success and we um, uh, we we have always struggled with not having enough people to handle those things and mm -hmm. um, the uh, past six months of working with uh, uh, with uh, her um, we are at the position that it is so comfortable to go d to back to go to Katie's mm -hmm. office and say well this is coming up and she looks with great calmness and um, because she's also worked on prototype pieces mm -hmm. that can fit for virtually every occasion that occurs in the schools. You've got templates. And templates, yes. 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 Yep. yes. She yep. is a, she's a, communi a, she, she's a communication <laughs> yes. professional that um, um, uh, uh, Julie and I can uh, walk mm -hmm. into her office and say, she look at this, look at that, and <laughs> oh my goodness, what a relief that is to have good communication <laughs> and to um, uh, make everybody look good and that's what Excellent. Katie does is outstanding job of uh, uh, our principals our, our teachers and everyone looks good because yep. of her work well and you're still mm -hmm. new to the position but I, I certainly more, hope that you will be back come. on again mm -hmm. and again and again in, right. in your tenure mm -hmm. with the district sure. um, one other thing real quickly because we're down to like about two minutes um, one of my uh, volunteers here um, mentioned about the Mark Wood concert um, mm -hmm. who, who can talk about that just sure. real quickly? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Sure, okay. I can take a lead on that. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, exciting opportunity for our uh, orchestra and choir students from across the district, so both high schools and our middle schools, on March 16th. Um, a week of uh, instruction will be culminating in a rock arena concert um, at the Menominee Nation Arena, and that's featuring Mark Wood, uh, co-founder of Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Uh, the event is open to the public. Uh, we encourage uh, everybody to attend, whether you live in Oshkosh or surrounding areas. Um, it's a great experience, and especially with the uh, new arena, it's really going to be that, that true rock arena experience yep. featuring the incredible talent of our students. Sure. So. Mm -hmm. and, and we didn't talk about tickets. Is it free, or how much are the tickets? Uh, the tickets uh, range from uh, general admission is $12, um, and then you can uh, get some VI pricing uh, or tickets up to $42. Okay. And um, uh, last time uh, the, the event, because the, the arena wasn't available, mm -hmm. uh, took place in Kimball Auditorium, and it was standing absolutely room full, only. standing room only. Mm -hmm. wow. And um, and it's a wonderful showcase. And one of the neat things is it um, breaks the stereotype of the um, kind of um, uh, uh, stodgy string orchestra people. Mm -hmm. uh, it is so delightful to see um, because, um, uh, and I think it's a strength to our string orchestra program because mm -hmm. it, it um, allows uh, students to experience experience um, uh, both um, uh, both Brahms and Beethoven and the work that is uh, in mm -hmm. this concert um, because um, uh, there there's sometimes people get typecast and um, sure. mm -hmm. this is a great way to see uh, outstanding musical performers uh, to get out of their um, uh, their uh, typecast role and sure. uh, and be there mm -hmm. on stage All right. yeah. excellent um, in our remaining moments here, I just want to uh, mention that we have a new superintendent who will be incoming mm -hmm. as you retire, Dr. Vicki Cartwright. She starts July 1st, um, and um, we have already talked uh, mm -hmm. before we did this show tonight about a date for you to come on along mm -hmm. with Dr. Cartwright and um, sort of give you a swan song uh, performance, mm -hmm. if you will as we welcome her on board. So we'll right. be doing that in uh, June. Right. Uh, one of the so things, one of my goals for this year with the, with the board, okay, so. was uh, to um, uh, be able to um, help with a smooth transition. I love this district so much that I, I absolutely committed to the board that um, when a new superintendent is selected that um, I need to make the transition as smooth as possible uh, with whoever is selected and, um, and to uh, have that uh, uh, new person know and understand all the talent and uh, creativity and expertise we have in the district but not miss a beat for the community. 
Okay. Good. Well, I'm looking forward to having both you and she on and getting to know her and um, certainly reflecting back on, on your time here. Sure. So, very good. Thanks to all of you Thank for being you. here tonight. Thanks for having sure. us. Absolutely. Yeah. Keep up the good work. This is it's fun. Wonderful. Yeah, I'm always amazed at how fast the hours go by. I know, <laughs> I know, it is. Me too. All right, that's going to do it for us. Uh, thanks to my guests, thanks to the crew, and thanks to you. We'll see you next time. Until then, take good care. Keep your eye on us. We've got our eye on Oshkosh. Thank you.